well, good morning and welcome back to Big Old Hunters. Um, you join me here in my syndicate uh, months later after I've posted my last video. I and mean, there's a reason why I haven't posted, it's because uh, I, I, I said to myself, um, I'm, I'm not going to you know, post another video until I finally caught one. Well, here we are, and it's just happened um, about an hour ago. It's now six o'clock, so it was about around five o'clock my uh, left left hand rod, right hand rod sorry, um, ripped into action. I'm fishing locked up because there's loads of weed around and it did um, lock me up into, into, a, into a weed bar so I got out on the boat about five ten minute tussle and she was in the net. It's nothing massive, it's 11 pound two but any fish from this lake is, is a crown jewel to me. Um, it's my 26th or no 27th night tonight so it took me 27 nights to catch my first carp here I've lost two in the process and caught 43 probably more tens because I've been logging everything but there's been a few in the night where I, I must have forgot to log them so around the 45 mark tench so it's been a grueling old spring and start to the summer and um, a few of the lads have had, you know a few have been coming out and that my target fish for this year uh, for this you know what my time on here is called um, I'm not gonna tell you its name but that's not been out yet um, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm absolutely buzzing. Um, never been so happy to catch an 11, 11 pound fit, a double. But uh, like I say, it's an absolute perler. I need to get someone up here to take some photos of it. But um, welcome back. I will be blogging regularly now. I have been making videos and showing you the bits and that I've been doing. I just say I just, I didn't want to just keep posting videos of, of other people catching fish and me and me blanking. Essentially, I wanted to wait. And um, not only that, um, filming everything does hinder and like does hinder your fishing. And I just haven't filmed much. I've just been running around chasing and chasing them about and, and trying to catch them. And um, you know, I kind of slowed things down, targeted an area, put a lot, of, you know, kind of pre-baited an area quite quite heavily over the last few weeks, and it's worked. Like I say, that there's a couple more drop just jumped out about 10 minutes ago, so I'm sitting on my hands. So hopefully, I can turn that into two fish, um, and that'll be the one. And you'll see. I'll show you the swim. So I was out on the boat there. This is this is the kind of weed that you're dealing with here. I mean, that was from yesterday morning. Four o'clock in the morning, I actually brought a tench in, in amongst all of that. Thought it was a carp, so. Here she is, here's the swim. It's my uh, brolly. And yeah, I was in, I was in there, out kind of where that reflection is, I'm battling it out, and I managed to pluck it out of the weed and get it, get get it in the net. Once it was up, it was a, uh, it's game over. And she is down there, just waiting to be photographed. There he is, 11 pound 2 ounces. <laughs> First fish out of the syndicate, but absolutely buzzing. It's quite a tough old water, really, to be honest. So, to finally add one, I knew it was going to happen eventually. There we go, we'll show you, show you his other side. These fish are in such mint condition. It's going to be a beauty when he grows. Well, he's a beauty now. And there we go. 11 pounds, 2 ounces. Thank you, my love. Tiny little pike with like a little roach in his mouth. Him. That was a perch. Off he goes. 
right guys you would would have seen that fish um, literally just as I was uh, about to take the photos for the first time um, you know sort of half an hour after uh, I caught the fish my right hand rod that I, you know just cast it back out um, that, that I caught the the little 11 lin linear on um, ripped off again almost almost got dragged into the lake again because I'm fishing locked up bent into it could see it just start kiting right feels pretty heavy and then it solid into into weed so I um I jump out on the boat get out to it and um you know I can I can feel it you know it's almost before I even before I'm right above it I can feel it come out of the weed come out of the weed so I'm pulling slowly don't want to give too much pressure um, and then it pops out of the weed and then kind of carries on scooting out to the right it's on the surface I can see the lead is discharged so it's all good and I'm playing it for about another five minutes it then comes to the uh, top of the society. I'll just look. I thought, I thought I just saw one show, but it was a, but it was a, a fucking coup. They've, they've, the black chickens have moved on, on to me now. So then I'm playing this fish in open water. All, always good. I've got the net by me, and I kind of get it, get it up, get it first lung, and I see it's quite a big um, lin, and uh, not lin, um, fully scaled fish, a mirror. Um, you know, could have, you know, definitely a decent fish. Uh, you know, up, up to the high 20, 30 grams. It's hard to tell really until you get him, get him in there. But you know, a decent fish. And then, you know, I'm like this, and the boat's spinning. I'm like, Nip. so kind of miss it. And then I get, get it again, get it right in line, go to, to scoop it, and its head, is it is in the is in the, in the net. Now, this is where the problems begin. So the cord, on my net. So the fish. It's kind of got a load of weed around it, and then I've got I've got it in this I've got the, the head around here, and my my cord snapped. This snapped, and now this bit is as flimsy as anything. So what happened is um, I kind of as I was as I was pulling it and pulling it, the weed was kind of keeping the the net net down. Like I say, this this cord snapped. And uh, the fish kind of shook its head and obviously the hook hold was quite dodgy from being in the weed and all this and the hook pulled and then the fish kind of just rolled off the half out of the net and it was on gone. And that was, and uh, I don't think there was anyone else on the lake because I screamed, ah, see you next Tuesday, as loud as I could. I thought that double bubble, that would have been amazing and definitely my first kind of proper decent fish from here. And then uh, I came back and, and filmed, you know, filmed that little fish and then put it back and took took some self takes of it just shows you here's the weed <laughs> that tent was stuck in but it just shows you it's weird like after spending all that time you know that's the third one I've I've, I've lost now in this lake I've had I lost one on my fourth over over the swim right on the other end I lost one down there a few weeks down this the right hand side swim down there um, a few weeks ago that weeded me up similar to this but I didn't have the boat then so this time I actually had the boat I mean the little one even weeded me up but I was able to get on the boat pop it out and, and get it in the net the weeds are a nightmare at the moment and there's um, a couple of the other members have been having some problems and they've lost a few fish kind of stuck in the weed and it's yeah it's uh, I suppose it's one of them things and um, you do you know as much as you can trying to get it out I mean that was actually the bit that was stuck onto the fish because it ended up bloody in my net here. So yeah, I mean, it could have been a fish that they call Jamie's, which is one of the prize fish in here, but it didn't quite look like it. I don't know if it's one of the, but it was definitely a, a big fish. Um, another kind of fully plated, didn't really get a too, too good look at it, but I think it might have been one of the stockies, which is which was kind of a bit fully looked like it, but it looked big. Um, but then again, anything against 11 pounder looks big, doesn't it? So it's gone high, highs to low in one morning. I'm still here for a few more hours. Um, and let's see what happens. Hopefully I can get another take. Because that's twice now I've been out in the boat in one, in one morning, you know, fighting fish. I'm sure they've done the off. I'm sure of it. There was a few showing and I just knew it felt right. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they've done the off. And uh, but can't complain. First blood. Uh, hopefully, I can just keep trickling it on, trickling it on. Keep learning the water. Keep the bait going in. And, you know, start picking them off, and then hope, you know get myself into good, good kind of place to start for next season.
because I'm going to fish here until um, probably late November, um, early December, depending on the weather and how work fishes. And I'm going to go over the road um, to Lindbrook and get a winter ticket and, and do some time over there. Um, just for a few bites in the winter and then do a little bit of a winter campaign so I can get some good footage for you. Some really nice fish in there. So, um, you know, little lake, lots of fish in it. So a couple of originals that, I'm, that I would like to catch some commons and that. And uh, we'll, we'll see. It'll be a good, good winter session. Get a few bites, get your confidence up and then back to this place in spring. I can't believe I'm already in well into August. Um, like I say, although I've only had one fish, um, lost three now. Uh, one fish, 43, 45, however many bloody tench. Um, but I've enjoyed this season on here um, uh, more than I have in years. It's just in that, the vibe on it. It's just not only the, some of the, the the fish that swim in here, you know, some of the most tricky carp to, to hook, and even some of the stockies they're they're tricky to hook, but they're just majestic beauties and. Something about this lake which is quite special. It's it's not it's in, it's um it's not in its prime. You know, it used to be one of the best lakes, if not the best lake in the country at one point in time, but it's not, but it will it will get there again. You know, I keep seeing on, on social media a lot of people talking about um, slagging off the simos and stockfish and this and that and it and those fish, th those old scalies that we love, they were stockfish at one point. Um, you know, and if you really like your carp fishing, eventually these stockfish will be the old the old 30 year old scaly so it just swings around about you've got to look for the future it's you know it's so small so ignorant and so blindsided just to you know of course we all want to catch big old chestnut scaly fish yeah you know old english ones of course we do and but you know people like the guy who owns this lake who has um you know put stockfish in here um he, you know I mean, some of them have reached way, you know, 30s and, and you know, they, they'll keep growing. And, and, and this place in, you know, six, five, six years time will be what it was. And there'll be stacks, loads of 40s in there. I know it. I can, the, 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 how healthy they are, the, the amount they're growing. And it's just one of them things. I mean, you've got, you can't be short-sighted and you, you can't be, uh, you know, ignorant about these things. You know, if you want, if you want to keep these, these waters going, because eventually all them old English, the old English ones are going to die. And then we're left with... You know the stockfish, which everybody hates catching, but it is what it is. Just treat every carp. It doesn't matter if it's stocked. Um, just treat you know, every carp is just as majestic and as beautiful as the next. So just enjoy your fishing. Don't worry about um, if anybody is going to put comments on Instagram or thing about the fish or size, what type of fish it is. If you enjoy doing it, then go out there and do it. And um, hope to see you around sometime. Hi right, guys, I'm going to talk to you about the bait that I've been putting out there. It's very important. Um, I've been. Um, you know, bait, pre-baiting and baiting up a lot the last few weeks I mean, in one certain spot to try and kind of really get it going and obviously the key to these fish that I've had is really down to the bait, bait application and the type of bait I'm putting in, I'm sure of it. Um, so we'll start off with um, the goodness, this stuff. So this is particle mix. Um, in, in, in the actual particle mix I've got the boilies in here as well so I've got 14 mil nutcrackers in there and as soon as the, the stuff is cooled down um, sometimes when it's a little bit warm I chuck the boilies straight in there because all of that extra water I want to get sucked up um, by the nutcracker and that makes them extra extra soft and the fish just absolutely love them so um, I mean this is the, the kind of bulk of the mix so in there there's 50% hemp and then 50% pigeon conditioner and in the pigeon conditioner you've got things like maple peas, tears, maize little groats, all sorts of bits and bobs. It's called the Super Breeder, I really like it. Um, so you've got that. I also whack in um, tin of corn to a whole bucket. I don't want to put too much yellow in because like I say, the birds go mad for it, but we'll get that in there now. Oh, that tin's fucked. Hopefully this one will be all right. There's always one, isn't there? Right, so tin of corn goes in first. Fleck of colour so you can fish you know, and a bit, of, a bit of yellow over the top. And then, in with our mix, nutcracker, particle and hemp. Oh, it just smells lovely. Smells of that lovely sweet nutcracker smell. So the reason, um, 
I mix it up like this is obviously there's a few reasons and I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, and the final ingredient, well not the final ingredient, but the other main core ingredient is pellet. Um, this is a 6mm pellet, a very dark oily pellet, super nutritious, absolutely amazing, slicks up a, a beauty. Um, so I pour some of that in there as well. This bait's going out in an hour or so, so I don't I don't mix the pellet in there first all together in the cup for minutes because otherwise it just turns to mush. So I've got one more core ingredient which I'm just going to grab. My last ingredient is the nut juice from Urban Bait. Um, very similar to, to this stuff, the gloopy stuff that you get from cooking your particle, but this is from, from uh, your um, tiger nut and it's really sticky, gloopy as you can see. Put kind of a quarter of a bottle per mix. And that just really just stickens, stickens it up. Just gives it an extra little nutty kick. So there's the mix. I'll bring it up to you. There's the final mix. Um, let's see if we can get this down here. Right. So yeah, there's the mix. As you can see, you've got... Leave it there. You got nutcracker, you got a few nuts, um, peas, maple peas, tears, groats, a bit of sweet corn, some maize. So I explained because I thought I definitely think about the bait that I'm putting out there. This isn't just my ultimate mix or anything like that. Um, I've definitely thought about it. So the, the hemp, obviously, um, hemp is one of the most attractive things to, to all fish. There's a lot of tension here. Um, and I know they love they love the hemp as do the carp, but the hemp and the particle really is more um, to kind of get this. There's so much weed in this uh, in this lake, and it's really to kind of clean the spots off. So I put a lot of that. Of that. Not only that, um, you never know. Uh, you know, if you if you did want to fish like a you know a tiger nut over the top with a bit of, or a bit a few couple of grains of maize, you can't fish plastic in this lake. Otherwise, I probably would be fishing that um, over this stuff, but. You know, I always like to fish one rod on vegetable on the bottom. Um, so that, that's why that's in there, to kind of help clean the spot. Um, and just kind of give, give you know, the, the, the carp a different option, keep them guessing really. Um, the, the pellets in there, the pellets in there to slick up, um, break down, but also keep smell in the area for a long time. This, this pellet does take quite a long time to break down. And it's very oily and every time you know the tension feeding you see him rolling and bubbling in the morning you get the biggest slick and you know you know you know there's something going on so it kind of it's a good indication of, of when to kind of reel in and not i use it for that really um because you know it, if i want to kind of nothing's really happening i might reel in and go for a walk see if i can find any for a move or whatever but you know suddenly a slick comes up it's a really good indication that there's something going on down the bottom um some sort of even if it's silver's feeding or something but it's, it's also really good and then obviously the final piece to the puzzle is your nutcracker and they're left in there for when the carp do turn up um, and uh, hopefully there'll be still some left for when they do turn up and uh, you know that gives you the option of fishing boily like I have been over the top um, yeah so there's the mix that's what's been doing doing the biz um, and let's just get some more out there and hopefully we can get a few more going you have a look at that absolutely brilliant just try to think about your mixes and not just chuck all your favorite things in there like i say i do like using um all sorts of bits you know ground bait can be good in mixes tuna but this is this is the perfect mix for this type of situation this type of venue and uh nothing too heavy in there no big boilies or no big pellets and it you know can flutter down and sit on any weed you know hopefully lots of little bits keep keep some grubbing keep some cleaning keeping the spots clean which is what you want in weedy lakes so there we go Get on it. I was back down the syndicate and lucky enough to have three nights ahead of me. First thing on order was to get out there on the boat, check the spots and get some more bait topped up. It was then time to wrap up the rods, get them out on the spot, get them in nicely, get them in quietly 
not too much disturbance and see what the night ahead would bring. Right, I've just had this. This is a PB tension me. And this is uh, 12 pounds and 4 ounces. This is the second 12 pound tench I've had out of here. The first one I didn't record because it, it was um, fell hooked in the tail, unfortunately. But this one, it's an absolute beast. It's the depth of it. Um, oh, you it's hurting my back. I'll show you the other side. I've just lost another one, cut me up. So I had this, sacked it, quickly got the um, the rod back out and then it ripped off again and cut me off on the bar. Could you feel it running in the bar? Oh. But there it is, 12 pounds and four ounces. Absolute beast, chunkiness of it. Oh. Right. Just had this one, 24-2, my first proper one from Syndicate. Oh, beat me up in the snags. I managed to get it out, out there. Oh. She is absolute beauty. I'll show you the other side. Colours on these fish are just amazing. There it is. Hampshire Beauty. Let's get it back. Good morning and welcome back to Big Girl Hunters. Uh, you join me uh, back down at my syndicate on my final morning of my kind of week off session. Um, so how the how it, the rules are on, on this lake is you can do um, kind of three nights and you have to be off for, for 48, uh, 48 hours and, and then obviously come back for free. So, um, which is quite good because um, back, back in the day before um, it used to be kind of five nights on I think. And that's when you used to get a lot of people um, you know, camping out for five nights, a lot of um, swim holding and swapping and all that sort of stuff so the stack kind of rule kind of stops that a little bit I think but um, the bunch of Alan um, who owns this lake is um, I suppose he's quite selective about the people that he that he lets on um, and just doesn't let on any dickheads really um, so this year had an amazing group of lads that none of that stuff's been going on it's been absolutely amazing um, so, it's, so it's been pretty pretty good really um, I just want to thought I'd just take take this time to kind of uh, talk to you about the rig that I've been using um, you know, I've had my, had the, it's tricked up the first two carp from here because it's you know fairly notoriously difficult water. Um, it can it can be very difficult at times, and um, there's not that many in here. It's very weedy, clear water. Um, it's fairly big lake, big bit of water. So it's not not massive, but you know it's a decent sized bit of water. Um, so I thought I'd show you the rig because it's um, I think you'll be surprised at how simple it actually is. And um, there is some technicality behind it. And um, so to start off, it's a 30 pound um, coated soft braid. That makes up obviously the core um, part of the rig. Um, this one is 12 inches, but I have been using them up to 14 inches, and just with a bit of put putty in the middle. And if we go to the to the business end, now it's a, a size four um, R CSR BMG hook, which is essentially a pop-up hook because it has an outturned eye. And but uh, 
with the way that the, this coat, this obviously material is quite thick, being thirty pounds, and um, the only the only bit that's stripped is the hair. So you see, it's very, and it's a long hair as well. I think that's the key, in way over an inch and a half um, hair. Uh, so you can see um, the coated braid um, is not just knotted, um, and then literally just the just the hair. Um, is is kind of exposed um, and that gives you the movement I think I mean what that does is I mean it's very simple but it, it gives it a, I mean this hooks really sharp and it's a straight point and it, it, it re is really good at hooking fish but it widens up the gape and if you see people do this silly palm test um, you'll see it literally turns every single time nails them on the, every every tench um, nails on the, on, on the bottom lip. Now, I haven't had any hook pulls of any tench um, with this rig, and like I say, I've had a few. I had a hook pull in the weed. I've had a hook pull, pulls in the weed and um, with the carp, but that's probably down to going out in the boat and and kind of dislodging the hook and stuff. But this is a very very good hooking and holding um, rig, and I, I feel. Um, the reason why I'm fishing on the bottom, this is that is just a straight, that is a bottom bait. It's a nutcracker, 40 mil nutcracker, that's been glugged up in the nutcracker favour and lots of the liver cracker, so much so that it almost turns into a paste. It smells absolutely gorgeous, but it's quite a heavy bait, and with that long hair, and I think that they just find it difficult to deal with. Basically, the fish are quite riggy here, and then. Um, I used to use a rig like this quite, quite many years ago with just just the hair stripped, um, and it used to do me you know quite a lot of fish. And then um, I basically wanted to. I have so much. For, this is my favourite hook. This RCSR. Um, it's the what I use on my multis and my you know stiff hinge rigs and all that sort of stuff. And I have so much faith in it. It's always nailed. They hardly ever drop fish. Always nailing fish. So I wanted to kind of incorporate it into it into a bottom bait rig. Because um, the size four is it's just it's not a huge four, but it's it's a strong, sharp hook. Um, so that was kind of my thinking behind it. Just a little bit different, like I say, a lot of the lads on here are using. Well, to be fair, everyone's using all sorts. There's a lot of like choddies and runnies and that sort of stuff. Um, but the thing is with this, you this you, um, with the longer hair, obviously you can fish it on top of the weed with a bit of foam, but um, it's best to be ha using this on a clear spot. And where I've been baiting up so much the last few weeks, the spots out there on the bar are clean, and um, so I've been getting away, getting away with that, and it's obviously worked. And um, the only thing is, like I say, the tension of it as well. But um, there's the rig. Um, took took me, you know, a few months to kind of work out what was going on, what I feel like. I felt like I was getting done. I was using. Um, I mean, I had plenty of tension on, on, on Ronnie's and Choddies and stuff because I was kind of turning up, moving on fish and chucking singles out and then putting bait over the top, but it just wasn't working. So I had to do the kind of bait and wait and bait up an area. And, you know, I put so much nutcracker out. I wanted to just fish, you know, fish the bottom bait. Um, and, it, and it's obviously worked. That fish that I caught, um, the 24 Leany, had, has been on the missing list for a few years. And it, so it's obviously, you know, it's not a mugfish, quite difficult to catch. So. It's obviously worked and it's tricked up a rare one, so we'll, that's, you know that's what's, what it's all about. If you just see that hair, it just seems it just seems to work with the kind of the way the material is, this, the kind of a slight stiffness of it with that hair. They suck it up and it just nails them. So yeah, if you want got any questions about it, then drop me a message on the Facebooks and stuff. You know, it's nothing revolutionary. It's nothing. Um, it's, in fact, it's so easy to tie, but it, it, it does really work. I've done really well in, in, in France in previous years on the similar rigs uh, like this, so using you know big baits, big hairs. Um, but that was with like a choddy hook. Like I say, this one is more. It's a straight pointed hook, and it doesn't have quite this quite that out outturned eye. But yeah, it's an absolute beauty. So yeah, get on it and uh, let me know what you think.